Here's my page. <laughs> Up goes the weasel. <laughs> Would that wake you up? Yeah. You're like, eh, no, nothing's, nothing's going to work for me. We're going to do it anyway. you got to join me. I don't know if I'll blow out the mic. Okay. You ready? Come such a fantastic panel. I absolutely love these folks. We are going to start with Android 16. It is Jeremy Inman. <laughs> well, you actually have to sit here because of mic levels. We adjusted mics. I had to guess their heights earlier so we'd get mic levels. Okay, next up, Android 18, Meredith questions, but I want you to just be thinking of what questions you have for them, because then we're going to open it up to VIPs first, and we're going to like form a little nice little line and ask questions, so just be thinking of what you would like to ask. But I kind of want to start off with, could you even imagine when you recorded, when you got the audition, or when you came in and booked the job that you would be sitting here so many years later talking about your character and talking about Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Z, all the things. Jeremy, I'm I think I think they Sorry. just volunteered no. you. No. 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 I didn't I didn't know pull back the curtain. I didn't even know what anime was when I auditioned for this show. Okay, really? So this yeah. was your introduction this into like, anime? Yeah, I was actually in paramedic school and I found out I got the part morning and then I had to go to school at night and I was telling my partner about it I just recorded this thing it's anime or whatever Dragon Ball yeah. Z and is that cool and somebody <laughs> in front of me did know it because I was a big fan and they told oh, me, really? you did what in the huh I'm like so I told her and she was like Ugh. and then just she just turned around like she didn't explain to me anything she yeah. just, <laughs> she just <laughs> went <laughs> so that was 22 years ago wow. so now I'm doing it full time that's crazy. Here we are. And here we are. What about you, Meredith? Yeah, um, actually, Kent Williams. I think you probably met him as Dr. Zero. I was mm -hmm. in a theater show with him at the time. And he goes, because my wife, they're like trying to get these, you know, they're auditioning people. We should go audition. And so me and Laura Bailey were best friends at the time. And uh, we went to the audition, not, not knowing what it was. And I honestly think that they went, hmm, she kind of looks like Android 18. <laughs> <laughs> we should book her. Typecasting. Typecasting. She looks like her. I mean, for real. It was Chris Barrett and yeah. Justin. They're like, looks like her. All right. Done and done. Yeah. And so, so, yeah, but no, I had no idea what it was, no idea what I was walking into, and it was quite, it's been quite the adventure for sure. Well, Linda, what about you? Um, same here. I had no idea what anime was, and my friend Patty <laughs> called me up and said, there's this open audition. But I, ha I had been an actress for years, so I had an agent and everything, but she said, you want to go and then have lunch? Because she always liked to have lunch. So we went to this, and I had no idea what it was either. We just had to imitate the, the ocean dove voices. That's what I had to do. We had to oh, imitate really? voices. Yes, because they wanted to have a smooth transition from the ocean dove to Funimation dove. Mm -hmm. So Chris Abbott called me and said, you have the part of Frieza, and I said, okay, who's Frieza? <laughs> The one with the scratchy voice. I'm like, oh, thank you so much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
And he said, you'll find out who Teresa is. And yes, I did. Are you interested in voice acting? Are you a professional actor or just interested in getting started in the industry? EliseCoaches.com is a great place to start with lessons. I've been taking lessons with her for the last five or six months. And in that time, I've been able to find my voice, find what I'm good at. If you guys are interested in getting started, go to www.elisecoaches.com. That's awesome. And do you love voicing villains, especially in the show? Yeah. Talking about Dragon Ball, yeah. What is it about voicing a villain? With a villain, you can do anything you want. <laughs> Whether it's bad or good, you don't care about the consequences. And it's like therapy. <laughs> to keep your frustration out? My daughter's here, she'll tell you. She oh, was, when really? I was doing, I've been doing cameos and she goes, oh, mom, you can really get your stress out that way. <laughs> Calling everybody monkeys and all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's who we should question your daughter. She got called a stupid monkey. I don't know where she is. <laughs> yeah, that's true. What about you? For me, playing a villain. Yeah, because it's so opposite of my probably personality in real life. I'm really nice and I'm not mean at all. And I probably would never say anything mean to anybody. So, yeah, you get to play this whole character that, you know, is just super snarky. Yeah, and tough, way more than I know. <laughs> the only bad thing about uh, voicing a villain is there's not enough screen time. Mm -hmm. They always get less screen time, and I, as a director, I never understand it, because you need conflict in the story, and there's usually too much hero stuff going on. It's like, <laughs> <laughs> but the fun thing about voicing a villain is yeah. the dynamics, like what they were saying, it's like you could, there's a lot more freedom in voicing them, totally. just deliveries and voice matching them, because um, they're the villain. Hero has expect audience expectations, and if they don't meet that, then you guys hate them, and the show tanks, and never, nobody makes any money. <laughs> <laughs> so, talk about some of your other characters. So, with Dragon Ball was your, I think, each of your first characters, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. And so that's really where you learned anime, you learned the technical aspect. Mm -hmm. I would love to hear about learning the technical aspect. And as you know, Jeremy's a director as well. And so you probably have some insight for us. It's, <laughs> or. it's completely different. All of us recorded yelling our butts off on the tape. So tape. if the tape, tape wasn't good, they had to rewind, rewind it and do it again and again. I think I screamed in that first fight with Cell. 25 times at least, at least yeah, constantly least. and there's no there was no editing it was, it was it, especially the first in, incarnation of dragon ball z all that screaming and yelling is real time there's not a lot of editing happening there it's just a lot and that was as my first introduction to drag to any kind of voice it's acting hard. i was like it was. what and then, and then the computers would freeze oh yeah it was, and then you'd have to do it again yeah for perspective, my now boss, boss of production, was running tape for Chris Sabat when we started recording Dragon Ball Z, Justin Cook. Justin yeah. Cook. He was yes. running the board. He was running the board. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Sure. yeah. Now I it's know. all digital. And, and now it's easy, yes. Yeah. yes. But it is, like, I feel like people want to know about anime because they don't realize how it's a technical so thing technical. as well because you've got to have the acting chops, but you've got to, you know, grab script, look at screen, have the acting. So match talk to that, match, match the mouth, yes. So oh. talk to that a little bit. Oh, I was going to say the first time um, that we did a, um, the first time I had to do the big fight scenes. So Chris was my director at the time. And uh -huh. he was like, so Mayor, I'm like, I was like, what do you mean like fighting noises? He was like, <laughs> did you ever get in a fight? No, I've never been in a fight. He's like, well, you gotta like do better than that. <laughs> and then I would laugh after every take. I'd be like, ha! <laughs> it's like you can't laugh after every take. Yeah. Did you really? Did you laugh after, after every like, take? Like, yeah. <laughs> I can just picture this now, like picture oh, your totally Android character. Oh. Like, I would just start talking. It was, it was just hard. Cool all the fighting noises and stuff because we don't do those growing up like a boy. You know? oh, totally. So Chris Sabat taught me a lot of the fighting noises. So how did he get you started? Like how did he teach you? He would just do the noise. He would he would do it and you would kind of imitate? Uh-huh. Uh -huh. uh -huh. And um, I mean, because 
or then running noises. Even, yeah, running. You're like, who makes running noises? Or when I run it out. out. <laughs> <laughs> and also the scripts then were on paper, so we had to look down. Yeah. And then look up, look down, look oh, up. Oh, that's true. It was on paper uh, at first. Y'all don't even know. And, oh. and voice over dub, what we do, there, the actor has to work more than any other discipline in acting. And I will take that to the, I will die on that hill any day. <laughs> Because you're, especially in the, I mean, you're dealing with tape, you're dealing with yeah. a paper script that you're trying yeah. to read and yeah. talk and watch video too yeah. at the same time. They're, it's amazing anything I've done. And then remember, there would be the seconds, days. and we'd, they'd say, "Hold that screen for that many seconds till you see that number yes. come up." Yes. And so you'd be sitting there screaming and waiting for that number, like hurry, hurry. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Questioning your life decisions. <laughs> yes. That's how some people passed out in the first half. I've oh, heard that. I just threw up. <laughs> Did you? Yes. But not doing 16. I'm doing Taurus in Fairy Tale. Oh, man. And you almost threw up? Yeah, Tyler was making me scream move like on the 20th one. I just dug a little deep, I guess. I'm like, oh, what's <laughs> my move? Hold on. Get a bucket. I'm okay. <laughs> Get a bucket. I'm okay. <laughs> I remember some of my first fight scenes, my stomach being sore from the inside out. From all yes. Oh, really? Yes. It yeah. was, like, really funny. Yeah. yeah. It's like a workout when you came out of prison. You did, and you're just like, mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> well, that comes up. I'm glad you brought that up because the physicality of voice acting does come up a lot. I know Linda and I have talked about it. So do you all, like, get in there? I know I kind of have to <laughs> yeah, or move oh. around. Do you get in there and get into it? I don't, but you I don't. watch actors okay. doing them all day from the window, control room window. It's Is hilarious. it kind of amusing the, as a director yes, to watch these it's, actors? It's, especially like, some actors. And some actors in particular are like, uh, what are you doing in there? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Do you feel like secretly, you know? Yeah, sometimes. Like, I just, I just know the secret about it. I'll tell them. Uh, didn't they but, have video screens for a long time, though? In I that? thought they I did like for a while. They did, and I I think because we didn't have a good window to yes, communicate. Right. Yeah. And that was always embarrassing. Because yeah. I am probably one of those people you do that. that. Doesn't <laughs> <laughs> He's so secretly he's making fun of you over on the side. Dungeon yes. boxes. Dungeon boxes. And then do you no, get into I it? Because Linda, I, I know you. I picture it more in my head. Yeah. And then I still kind of maybe move forward, but I don't do all this stuff. I, if I did, I'd be banging into the microphone. And it wouldn't be good. It wouldn't be good. Yeah. Do you, Meredith? Oh, I do. She does. You do. Because you're that and person. It's like a young girl or something like that. I'm in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's like. I have to act it out. But I'm very, I use my hands a lot. Oh, okay. Oh, well, me too. So I'm like you. Yeah. Uh, yes. So, Jeremy, you can make fun of the two I'm of us. But yes. I, yeah, no, but I'm, but, I'm, but I'm just trying to read it. I'm just like, especially, well, remote wise. Well, yeah. Y'all don't, oh, yeah. don't even know. Let's go and put, just <laughs> jumping back into the technical aspect. Yes. We had actors having to edit their own stuff when 2020 happened. With a pencil. Oh, with a, yeah, with your finger or an iPad pencil. Oh, that was crazy. We moved yeah. on from of course. Well, I want to hear, um, and then after this question, we'll open it up. But do you, I'm missing some of the chit chat, what? Sorry, I just said there was no trauma. Oh, no trauma, no trauma at all. Terrible, <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm seeing it a little bit. <laughs> There's a little trauma. It's triggered. I want to know if you have any special moments that either you love from the series from your character or you just remember from the booth um, about your character or about recording. Like, do you have anything that really stands out about recording in general? I mean, it doesn't, doesn't even have to be from this character. It could. Mine, the first time, well, I've told the story many times, but it's Share so it again. It could tour, be a new the, audience. The first day I recorded Android 16 was my first day of voice acting anything in my life. Yeah. It was also the day that a tornado hit downtown Fort Worth. Oh, wow. Oh. So I can always remember the date because I was in, you remember the old building? At, yes. At yes. Sabbath's booth, the window yes. outside the Whisper Room, you could see into downtown Fort Worth. I lived down there. I lived about three blocks from where it hit. So I just, and I was there in Funimation recording oh. while it was happening. So I could see oh. the wall cloud coming in oh my to downtown Fort Worth. I'm like, what is going on? This is an omen. But it hit, it hit like two blocks down from my house at the corner where Camp Bowie meets with 7th Street and that museum district there. And there, there used to be, I don't know something, but there used to be a big billboard and the tornado took the posts and twisted them. 
like a wow. candy almost. So the city, it's the coolest piece of art in Fort Worth to me. The city came in and painted them and made an art display out of it. Really? Wow. With a, band, with a oh, like a idea. photo mural behind it of the Walcott I was just mentioning, wow. uh, the, the, something about the post office, because now it's a post office. So oh, wow. we, we deliver mail in a tornado. Just stop. Yeah. Yeah, it was that quote. It's like. Stops the mail. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, quote. <laughs> So Meredith, what about you? Okay, you have to repeat the question because I'm lost. Yeah, do you have? Uh, we're talking about tornadoes. Okay, and, I'm sorry. Yeah. What storms have you been? Yeah, what storms have you been? No. Um, do you have any special moments either from oh. recording the series or just in the booth or something that you would like to share? So when I got called back to do Super, mm -hmm. you know, and it's been years, and I thought, you know, everybody seen all this is done, and so um, it was really exciting to kind of bring her back because you know it's been such a fun past time um, I think it was you know she's a kind of a different she's kind of a little more of a mom she's married the whole thing um, but we died laughing when Kerlin flies off and we I, I was supposed to say like he's so cool or something like that and I was just like he's so cool and Chris and them just died laughing and so we like said like four times like this is the best line ever you know? <laughs> which are just like I mean it's so silly but it was just it was one of those memorable moments where we were all just laughing so hard yes. and how fun it was it was like it's a good memory. The Superman line, where Superman flies away. <laughs> it totally was. That's awesome. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it was just a memorable, memorable moment. moment for y'all. Yeah, yes. totally. So fun. I mean, I don't know a thing. I know one thing that kind of stands out, and this is when they still had newspapers. <laughs> I mean, when they were really popular, but they were coming to interview some of the um, voice actors right at the beginning. Okay. Mm -hmm. And um, I have been doing Frieza. I never lost my voice. It was always I could place it, but I didn't even know they were going to do this bit. But that day I came in, and my voice just didn't work. It was hoarse. So they wrote in the newspaper. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, I was trying to do Frieza, but my voice didn't work. And I'm thinking the one time when you do a newspaper. Oh, oh, I think my picture was in there. And, oh, it's like, thanks a lot. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh, my goodness. Well, how it's a long time. Yeah, that's crazy. That, and especially, you've got that powerful voice. Totally. The first time I saw her in person and heard her do the voice, I was like, what? That came out of you. Yes. I, uh, let's take some questions. And so what I would like to do, because we don't have an extra mic, and so if the if there are some VIPs who have questions, come here and you can tell me your question. They'll be able to hear the questions. Oh, I'm blocking your light. Oh, please. Um, please do. Uh, that, they'll be able to hear the questions, but I will repeat the questions so that you all can hear. So come forth. You are invited. VIPs. Not all at once. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, what's your question? Um, I was just thinking, wondering if there was any specific lines or any specific moments with your characters that, you know, was like that pinnacle moment for any of the characters you voice back if we could, if we could hear that if your voices were up for it. So he's asking if there are any like pinnacle lines or certain lines for any of their characters if they would be up for it. Are you up for it? Or? Know, mine's really loud. I don't know if I'm doing that. It's like the <laughs> hell splash when I'm kicking Cell's butt legitimately. I'm so bitter. That's what I was hoping for. Oh, that's what he was hoping for. It's too much. But it might stress, does it stress your voice too much? I'm sitting over here by a river and rabbits. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I do like it's time to fight uh, in the video game. Mm. When you choose me, I say something cool. I do. I pick you every time. Oh, do you? Do you? Yeah, yeah. Right. 17's up front, or she's, uh, 16's up front every time. But oh, can you nice. have me fight and beat 17? Oh, yeah, sure. That'd be awesome. <laughs> I promise you, I'll, 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 I'll show you this. As long as it's not. You should have all yes. three of us, because you can play three. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> um, one of my favorite lines was just from the Vegeta you know, series, because it was just, you know, it's so memorable, so I would always um, do, how sad to work so hard for so little. <laughs> 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 <laughs>
With me, I have no idea because Frida had so many lines. I know that everyone <laughs> likes the stupid saying monkey. I know everyone likes that. And I mean, everyone likes Pop Goes the Weasel. Yeah, you gotta do one of those. Uh -huh. Oh, here, this is what everybody wants. Go hot. Let it go. That's what everybody wants. <laughs> okay. yeah. Just let it go before else. It was, was Elsa before Elsa. Okay. Don't get that. It was a delayed reaction for me. That was a good one. Okay, this is about when he's to kill Krillin, as everyone knows. And to tell you the truth, I was in the booth and I said, What? I'm going to kill Sonny? <laughs> no. But anyway, it was kind of funny. Up goes the weasel. <laughs> What was what was the hardest scene you did for your character that you just remember? Yeah, okay, so he said, what's the hardest scene that you did for your characters, if you remember? And if there's not something specifically, maybe just a challenge that you've had as a voice actor in general. For Dragon Ball? For Dragon Ball. Dragon Ball. Or, or something else. Well, yelling all day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm, for me, I would just say it was like, um, it was in those beginning days when everything was so much more difficult and time consuming and you can't just digitally edit and you, yeah. know, you have to match the mouth correctly. And so it's like, sometimes you would do a take, you know, 30 times. Yes. Yeah. And it was, yes. you know, so it was the process was so much longer. Um, so those fighting scenes in the early days when I'm just learning the character, learning who it is, you know, who she is, what does she sound like, you know, what's out of character for her, and then also having to fight when you're like, what is fighting noises? And yeah, then matching the mouth on cue with that. <laughs> so that was, the early days were definitely the hardest. I think it's yeah. a lot easier now than it was previously. Yeah. And, and just recording a character they keep killing, <laughs> that you love. I love this guy. Why you keep killing it? Yeah, it's like, what's the problem? <laughs> With me, it'll, it would be the early days, too, because um, Frieza's lines were so long, so I'd have to look down and try to memorize it, and then look up and try to match the flaps. Mm -hmm. That was the that. hardest. Paper I, scripts, y'all. Yeah. And then, it, plus, you had to read the paper scripts. <laughs> and then check to see if there's paper rustling in the files. You know, yes, y'all. Yes. <laughs> y'all, that's what we keep hearing. Y'all. The paper script. The struggle's I, real. I know how we did it. I don't know how oh, we did it. Oh, paper scripts. You, usually, for me, I'd have to hold the script here so I could oh, see you? it. Like, I could see but my lines. But how'd you lines. keep it from rattling? Yeah. Exactly. Just hold it. You must have study hat. I don't know. I mean, I, listen, we should go back. I mean, it's probably full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> so now if we're watching old episodes, we're yes. all going to be listening now you can for appreciate it in paper ways. wrestling. Yeah. Old episodes. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. 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 What you got? Um, so are there any, like, lines from shows or video games you guys have recorded that like, after hearing you're just like, oh man, can I just like go back and redo it? Yes, and, all and the and time. Like, yeah. Okay. Like, specific examples of that. So yeah. for you guys, are there any lines that you recorded that you go back and go, ah, gosh, I wish I would have, I, I, I could do it differently or I wish I could re-record it. Boom. I, I wouldn't um, remember which ones, but yeah. All of them. I, I can tell oh, you right now. I'm not kidding. Like, but I, I wanted to be able to, I was a deep actor. I want to act more with Android 16, and Sabbath would always make me sound stupid. <laughs> it's like, you know, I just, this is too much emotion. You're an android. I just need you like this. I'm like, okay. And even the Gohan speech originally, I was like, all of that stuff. I, that's why I was so happy when Kai came back, because we were all just better actors at that point and better at voice acting at that point. So I think, oh my God, you go. I probably shouldn't say but this at the did. panel. Yeah. But you just watch the old stuff, and you're like, God, we're all terrible. But <laughs> you watch Kai, and it's a lot better. And then in the video game, Sabbath's not even there. So I get to act a lot more, especially this last you're right, one. the video game, yeah. Yeah, you so. But you've got that point. There's no yeah. mouth flaps to match. We, have, yeah. we do listen to the director. I mean, we mm -hmm. have to. Right. Mm -hmm. they, the other, they let me act more. So yeah. finally got a little redemption <laughs> after 20 years. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think I go back and listen to myself too much. It's kind of hard. 
Mm. I don't know. Maybe I critique myself too much. So. Oh, I, I think, think we all do. Yeah. Oh, you probably do it too, Lisa. Critique, yeah. yeah. It's so easy to critique yourself and yeah. think, oh, I could have done it better. I mean, I think that's part of acting, though, because also as an actor, you want to always be growing. So I think it'd be hard not to critique. It's an artist's journey. It is. It is a skill journey. to be able to objectively evaluate what mm -hmm. you're doing. It's true. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> yeah, good one. Thank, Thank you. you. Pete, what you got? Hey. Hey. So, yeah, my question's for all of you guys. Um, we, you only got to play a villain character. Like, what do you guys do to prep yourself to get into that mindset? So, when you're playing a villain character, what do you do to prep yourself to get into that mindset? I yell at my husband. <laughs> I yell at my daughter, my almost daughter in law, who's right over there. That's what I do. <laughs> Not really, guys. I didn't know you had a husband. Revealed here. What do I do to prep? Well, Andrea Teen is, you know, she's an android, so she doesn't have a lot of emotion either. So that's a, a great part of it. I can come in and just. Do nothing. Yeah. But, but I will say that is, that is hard. And then I will say, though, that um, the director is key. Yes. Because I don't know what is actually going on. I've not watched it beforehand. I don't know the full thing. So they're having to explain what's happening. We don't get to go in together and play off each other. You know? And that's, I think, a lot of I mean, I wouldn't want that, that to happen ever since I've started doing that. Yeah. But, you know, you are, you are strictly sometimes you're the first one and you don't get to hear any other voices. Um, and so you need a good director to help give you the storyline of where you're at and what's happening. And so I think that is one of the key things um, for me personally is just making sure that I'm able to listen and hear what they're saying. And, yeah. And Everything there is said. It sounds like a washout, but I just kind of let it happen organically because bumping off what Meredith just said, some you don't even know what he looks like up since the first time you're recording, and then you have to go on what the director tells you, what we're looking for, and then you just literally just let it happen organically, real time. That's why I'm. That's part of the fun of being a villain. It's like like I'm going back and what we were just starting. I, you know what you're going to expect with a hero voice. Anime is filled with them, all young little boys, and they have precious little voices. And they all sound the same, and they're all on the same somewhat journey or whatever they're doing. But villains, they're they're all different. No boundaries. No boundaries whatsoever. Yeah. So that's part of the fun of being a villain is walking in and seeing what it could be a monster, it could be whatever. So Jeremy, flipping the coin, as a director, what do you try to do for the actor to help them on their journey when they don't know a lot, perhaps? Well, I, uh, for me personally, every director's different, but I cast people I trust, especially in roles like that, to where we can collaborate. I'm never a dictator director. I like to, as an actor, as an actor for a reason, I'm here more like to guide their creative process and their collaborative work that we're, I have the last say, but it doesn't mean I have, I'm the only say, you know what I mean? So, um, if I cast Meredith, I already have an idea of the range she can bring to the property. And that's, again, as a director, I was saying about the actor having, it's, that's part of the fun of the job before you start reading lines, is finding what your, the actor's gonna do with it, and then how about, and then I'd suggest, from what I'm hearing from them, how to bring it here, bring it here, bring it here. And then that way, everybody knows what to do. Yeah, very cool. Well, thank you. Yeah, thanks. And Edgar, what do you, what do you have? Yeah, my question is, do you have any advice for, for any up and coming voice actors? And at what point do you actors feel that you should do this full time? Hmm, okay, so do they have any advice for up and coming voice actors? And then at what point did each of you feel like, okay, I can do this full time? Okay, well, first of all, acting is key, right? <laughs> I, so many people I know have theater backgrounds, um, and I think that helps a lot. Also, I was an actor before I even got into voice acting, so I had an agent, so I was always, I was always doing it part-time because I was married, mm -hmm. but um, I always seem to get a lot of work, all different kinds of work. At first, I would take any kind of work almost, you know, I mean, not that seedier, I think. <laughs> Anything. Frieza. Frieza was my seedier. But, um, but no, and I really think um, also, this kind of helped me, when I found out I was going to audition for this um, 
animated, it might be like a cartoon. What I did was a quick turn on cartoons, and I knew I was going to have to image it. So I kept imaging it. I started imaging the voices, imaging. And it kind of got me in the headspace, so when I got there, I could imitate well. But um, I do sometimes like to listen to shows, and I'll just pick one character and repeat what they say, but I'll repeat it differently, you know, with my own way that I would say it. And um, I've done that, too. But I really think acting, anything you can act, and then get a good voice coach or instructor that knows about the business, that knows everything about the business, that can help you with the demo, because they know what they know what you work with. So that's so, what I would say. Yeah, that's yeah. Good, great advice. What about you, Meredith? Yeah, I mean, I would say similarly. Imitation, you know, knowing your voice, knowing what you can do, having a good reel. You know, starting a reel is something that's just like you find different commercials, you find different uh, voices that you're wanting to do, and you learn to repeat that and get those styles down. Um, learning to have a healthy, you know, take care of your voice and knowing what you're what you're doing with that, um, and knowing your range. But most of mine was like imitation. I was an actor beforehand as well. I was not just, you know, that I didn't. I was not a rando. We were <laughs> in theater and doing film and starting that kind of thing too. So. Um, yeah, I mean, I would just say, singers too. Yes. So you can place your voice. Yes, very much so. And so like imitating styles with music, I can do the same thing. I started singing with the 16 piece orchestra doing big band music, but I also did pop music and I also could do country and I can do, and it's because I can imitate a variety of styles. Mm. And so I think being able to imitate your ears are your biggest friend, you know, like can you, and then can you emulate what you're but don't imitate someone exactly. No, exactly. <laughs> that's not a good idea, yeah, right? Yeah. Chris actually used to make fun of me when he first was directing. He was like, Meredith, because I would give so many line reads. I'd be like, how are you today? How are you? Oh, <laughs> how are you? And he'd be like, you don't need to give me 15. <laughs> 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 like, how are you? Intentional <laughs> gambit <laughs> of every, any way to deliver that line. Just you, pick you one. Just did, just pick one. <laughs> we did that one at Netflix. We have to do every way you can do a line. Yeah. yeah. I, I would say, this is going to be as, I mean, yes, everything makes sense, but have a long talk with yourself and f emotionally prepare yourself for a long journey and make sure you're ready for it because um, it is a hustle trying to be a full-time actor in any market, LA, here, wherever you are. Then take acting classes, not just acting classes not voice acting or acting for film or whatever, because uh, that is your baseline tool, right? Then get involved in local communities of people doing the same thing, because a lot of people see that as competition, but it's, no. No, it's going to help you network and find out who's doing what and where and who's looking for what. And then, you know, self-critique, peer critique, that kind of thing. Just locally, there's all kinds of VO hookup on Facebook or whatever. If you're on Facebook or whatever you're doing, I, I see them constantly um, uh, as far as the community you were trying to be a part of and then go from there. That is literally probably the best advice I could give you. And then, P.S., don't just, you'll never be full time. Well, I can't say never. I know plenty of people that do VO full time, but don't pigeonhole yourself into doing Full time. Have a backup just, just plan. Yourself. Do all <laughs> Do of lots it. Of things. Yeah, especially in this market. This market is big with yes. advertisers and like industrial content. Like, I'm going to read this thing for this widget company that needs to teach their employees something stupid, right? Those pay just as much as acting jobs, usually. Uh, and then you have the Shreveport market, and you have the Austin market, and you have the New Orleans market, and that's big TV film. Uh, but agents up here send actors, correct me if I'm wrong, for stuff like that as yeah, well from up here. Yeah. So you have to be ready. Like the DFW market is limited and not limited as long as you're willing to drive a couple hours, basically. It's like, what is it, the fifth largest media market or something? I don't know. Oh, yeah. So yeah, this for is, a while it was yeah, number five. It's in the top seven media markets. So there is just generic work here that they need actors for. And then all the anime VO happened here 20 and here we are. You know, so there's work here. Um, I would suggest, I mean, we'll just sag it out and all that stuff's a different conversation entirely. That, that we don't even need to have this. So. Yeah. Well, I, one of the things that I've noticed is people having their own 
studios. It's so easy nowadays. I yeah, say that, I don't not know. for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. We tried it. <laughs> but if you were young and not something that you're interested in, too, and then just doing it. I'm not talking about a big job, like like trying to get a job. But the more you do it, the better you get at it. I mean, when I'm talking with that, my main thing is songwriting and singing. You know, I'm like, songwrite day in, day out. If you've got a platform or you don't have a platform. Because when the opportunity arrives, you're ready because you're not waiting. And so my big thing is like, if you feel called to it, do what you can now. Mm-hmm. Don't wait for a big job. Right. Be prepared. Do people's mm-hmm. indie stuff. Don't let them take advantage of you. But also, I always see on Twitter all the time about, don't do work for free, which is not wrong. It's not wrong. Never let yourself be taken advantage of. But at the same time, if you're starting with that vein and yes. these people are making this game starting from that vein, it might be a good collaboration. Yeah, totally. I did when I was working, I never I don't I didn't always direct anime. I was working production. I AD a few movies and television shows and whatnot. And um, where was I going with that? I totally just something for free. Right. Yeah, something for free. <laughs> yeah. Some of the work I did on it yeah. like was hard work for free or pennies on the rate a day dollar. Yeah. But you do it anyway because it just community it opened me up to other people doing yes. the same thing. You did the same. I did the same. Thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you get such great experience because I feel like I've worked for casting directors and where I've interned and I've worked with at recording studios and I feel like the more you know about the business, kind of like taking acting classes just helps you as a voice actor, no matter what type of acting class. We're working on different parts of the business and I knew, like I think each of y'all have done that. Yeah. It gives you such insight on on all parts that it helps you as an actor, whether you're a voice actor or on camera actor. You never learn more than by doing. That's mm-hmm. true. You can That's read about true. it all day. You can That's hear me true. talk to you about it all day, but as soon as you do it, Yes. You know, I'm just little noise in the ear. And, and don't do it to be famous. <laughs> Thank no. you, please. You gotta actually like doing it. <laughs> because it's really not that easy. <laughs> it's not all it's practice. So many fresh <laughs> dreams come through the door. <laughs> Wow, you got it. That was a good question. You got a lot of discussion there. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. And don't be a jerk. <laughs> oh, yeah, be nice. Easy to work with. The key to getting work in this business is just liking what you do and liking the people you do it with. That's true. Yeah, and sometimes it's just like doing what you're supposed to do, having your stuff ready, submitting your auditions on time. If you're on camera, having your headshot and resume. Little yes. things. It's little things. Not right? being late. That's yeah. a huge one in the production industry. You show up you show up 10 minutes early, yeah. you're 10 minutes late. That kind of thing. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, so sometimes it is. It's the Following directions thing. on audition sites. Yeah. I've, I've heard auditions are a whip anyway. But when you're not following directions and I'm digging through 500 auditions, I'm like, what do you do if they don't follow you? I, I, I delete. I mean, yeah, seriously, yeah, yeah, sound, yeah, I have 500 yeah, to go yeah, through in three yeah. hours. I'm not going to go yeah, through no. all of it. I sent out auditions for some stuff, and I got stuff back with, that weren't even in the size. They just decided to read for characters that they wrote sides for. I'm like, this, oh, really? this, you're not getting hired just for this. I mean, yeah, you I could know. be the best voice actor in the world. You could be Ed Wynn, and I'm just going to delete. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It sounds cold, but I literally don't have time for it. That makes sense. Helpful. Yeah. Helpful insight. Ask him what is. you got for us. I got five so follow the directions. Follow the instructions. Good one. Like those things, what's the book? Everything you need to know you learned in kindergarten or yes. something like yeah. follow oh, directions. Yeah. Yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Awesome. So you guys have given a lot of good like prep, but I kind of want to like touch another aspect that you guys haven't touched yet. So from like a character study perspective, mm-hmm. like if you're doing like Shakespeare or Brecht or something, you can really sit down and analyze the character and get in their headspace. But when you're playing like Frieza or insert random anime character here, what is that process like and how does it differ from like a more traditional grounded role in terms of character study? Okay, so his question, that, that's a really good one. Because uh, you know, if you dig into Shakespeare or something, you have time to delve deep into the character, but sometimes Anime is a lot different, and you don't have that time. So, right. how does your character preparation differ when you're it's doing anime? Very quick. I mean, for me, I just look at the character, and I think I'm the character. That's what I do. Boom! I like that. That was a good answer. What about y'all? Yeah, I mean, I do think it's very different. 
I mean, it's not your traditional, like, you know, you're not doing a play where you're playing out a full part, you know, you really are going in and you have to perform right away with what you don't even know much about the character a lot of times. They may give you a small synopsis, you know, and then tell you where you are in the, in the, in the, you know, series, and you just don't get much. So it really has to do with inflection, trusting your director, and like, and then you kind of grow with the character. I feel like I yes. know Android yes. 18 yes. really well now. So I know how she says things, I know what she, you know, but I did it in the beginning and I had to go and listen to references of what I did the week before, oh, you yeah. know? And so it's like, I feel like it has a lot to do with, I mean, I wish it was like a deeper, like I'm getting ready and I can, uh, yeah, and but you just gotta be able to perform and you gotta perform quick. Everything they said, and that's why baseline acting for this discipline is so important because you have, it's all cold reading. Basically, yeah, take everything a, is you, cold you want to take an anime voice acting workshop, just go take a cold read class yes, at any definitely. kind of community college or acting school before any kind of actual voiceover workshop you want to do. Because that's what you're doing and that's why you have to trust the director mm -hmm. and trust your now learned organic skills as an actor to interpret that and then with yeses or nos from the director or guidance in a collaborative way with the director, but it's all cold reads Always. until you get it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first time you're seeing a line. Yeah, because so you, you don't get a yes. script you beforehand. You don't see it at all. Yeah. Sometimes, like going back to what we were talking about before, my favorite thing to do as a director that knows what actors do is to be able to, you only get to do it one, once a week, is when all your characters are recorded and then you have your lead in at the end of the day. And then they get to hear every, the whole show and then just insert their lines. And mm -hmm. that's the best product. Really that's like good. <clears throat> because yeah. acting's real. I mean, you're trained as an actor to yeah. respond off the energy you're getting from your other actor. But you don't get that. Well, you, you don't get, get that at all. It's, it's like little monologues. Yeah. It is. <laughs> Thankfully, I have one line in Right. Yeah, one line in I think I see you around there. Hey, what, what question do you have? All of the questions have been like really serious and really, you know, give me some advice. I already love or, you. Uh, yeah, 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 I was going to say. <laughs> I like it. No actual value. If your characters in uh, Dragon Ball were a sandwich, what <laughs> kind of sandwich would they be? I'm talking bread. I'm talking like fillings. Wow. Okay. <laughs> this is. I like it. We're shifting the mood. So if their characters, their Dragon Ball characters, were a sandwich, what kind of sandwich? And she wants the deets. Uh, let's see. Frieza would be the hottest. Like I'm gonna, I'm watching somebody do something I never will. It's kind of that kind of feeling. So, I mean, sorry about you. Am I like that. actually kind of hungry for lunch? So it, I'm mm. probably thinking more of something I'd want to eat now. <laughs> <laughs> what Android 18 would it? Does she even eat? Right. Do we eat? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, I'm thinking color palette. That's uh, my starting oh, yeah. point. Let's say I could have like a burger with guacamole on it. That's kind of a sandwich, right? Yeah. Or yeah. hash chili. Let's go green as well. Let's yeah. go hash jelly. Yeah. That's better. Yes, I like uh, that. Or, I mean, can you make like a Philly cheesesteak with hash jelly? <laughs> you can do whatever you want I'm to. I'm shooting from the hip here. I really want to eat it. Right. 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 Hatch chili right. Philly right. cheesesteak. Right. That sounds awesome. Plus, it's fun to say. Hatch chili. Wait. Hatch chili cheesesteak. Yeah, but there was a Philly, Philly in there. Right. Philly Hatch. Hatch chili, Philly cheese. Chili, Philly cheese. <laughs> cheese. That one. Yeah. There's your vocal warm up. Yeah. Hatch, Hatch chili, Philly cheese. Hatch chili, Philly cheese. Steak. Make that happen, world. Make that happen. Somebody. Thank you. That's that was fantastic. You. Okay, let's see. I think we have time for one more. What you got? So, if y'all could choose any anime character from any anime from since y'all started to date, who would you choose to voice? Oh 
Okay, so I, he said... I have, this sounds stupid. Wait, I have to repeat Sorry. in case oh. you didn't hear. <laughs> but uh, he's got an answer. So if you could choose any anime character from any show, who would you choose to voice Falco? I have the luck of uh, Captain Obi is who I, I mean, I can't ask for a better character to want to voice. Literally. I'm lucky enough to be able to do that. Or, I'm trying to think. There was... I, when I first auditioned for Dragon Ball Z way back when, I, I thought I wanted Hercule, Chris Rager's part. Uh huh. Yeah. Well, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it. Let's hear it. I don't even know what he says. Come on, boo. We, it's okay, boo. It's okay, boo. I don't know. <laughs> Probably would have been better. <laughs> I really like voicing Genkai so much. I like her character because she's good, but she's sassy. I love that. But if I could voice anything in the anime, I bet it would be Cruella de Vil. Oh, yes. Yeah, I mean. I would love that. Female villains in general. In yeah, anime. okay. Yes. More, okay. yeah. I agree. <laughs> um, too Cruella de Vil? Or to, <laughs> to more villains. To more villains. Yes. Or female. Yes. Or female. Yes, I agree. Um, yeah, I don't know. I'm, one of my favorite characters, obviously, is Launch, just because she's two absolutely different characters, and, you know, so it's like yeah. playing two people. Um, so that was fun. I would have loved if she was a bigger role. She's kind of a lot side of, character. I think a lot of people would agree with you on that. And recently, like, I did a video game where they're like, we should bring this character back. I'm like, who do I talk to? Like, who do I need to talk to? Make that happen. Oh, this is a great, yeah. But yeah, I'm gonna go Disney characters too. I always thought I was a Disney princess. Oh yes, yeah. Uh, like, and I mean, I could sing the songs for you in a second. You'd be like, all right, Disney princess. Elsa, move over. <laughs> move over. We stop here, I guess. Wait, I still say that you should dub that Let It Go thing as Android. Oh, let it go. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> I think we need to do a selfie with yes. you guys in the background. Okay. So you have to act awake. <laughs> yeah, like you kind of were. Uh, so here, where, would you want to turn around? What? Would you what? Wait, you can't leave. Oh, okay, you're going to get up. Oh, get up and participate. Yes. Okay, here we go. Oops. Okay, let's see. Do we have actors? Oh, yeah, do you want to turn it over? Yes, okay, ready, everybody ready? One, two, three, ah! Okay, now do a fun one. One, two, three. <laughs> what is fun when you're like, fun? Yeah, like, jazz hands. Jazz, I know, okay, jazz I, hand spirit fingers, <laughs> have fun. <laughs> okay, hey, y'all have been great. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a great day. Thank you.